Hi, Chicken Bone John here with another episode of Making a Cigar Box Guitar and today I'm joined by my daughter Anne Hello and she's going to be showing you how to wire your guitar Let's get on with it Okay, here's our guitar and if you've followed so far you should have reached this stage where we've got the guitar put together we've got the pickup in here, a single coil pickup our pots, if you remember we put an A250 and a B250 in here and we've also got the neck with this earth wire already sort of plumbed in to where these ferrules are so we're pretty much ready to go we'll talk a little bit about the components we're going to be using and some of the tools okay because okay, you're using a single coil pickup the pots that you're going to be using are a and b and they are 250k and we've got as you can see uh, on that brown baker light it will say that one's an A250 and the other one is a B250. So that's where you'll find it. Don't look on the back because that's just basically the manufacturer's code. Yep. And as you can see here we've got, there's two different varieties. And these ones here are 500 and they're the ones that you use for your humbucker pickups. I mean they're right, the sort of styling doesn't particularly matter the only difference is is down to which knob you then use because some of them you have to have yeah this this one if yeah. you see this has got a plain shaft on it and for that you really need one of these that's got a a, a set a set screw to grip onto that because you the things like this which is a a push-on knob won't fit so if you've got this push-on type knob without a uh, without a set screw you want this the, what we call a splined or split shaft and that will just push on there neatly this will also work on there uh, and it will work on the plane shaft but the plane shaft won't take the push on ones okay yep so that's all for our parts I mean just one thing to note is when you use them it has a little tab on the side which to take some pliers you just have to oh, if we take off the nut and the washer you just have to sort of twist it off really and that's everything for your pots. Next up is your capacitors and they come in various types, we've got three here. We've got our orange drop capacitor and then we've got a little ceramic one and then we've got this little green one which is probably, these two are probably your most common ones. Yeah. Yep. And they come in different varieties and depending on what pickup you're using um, you need to use a different capacitor. So for our single coil pickup here we're going to be using 0 0.047 yeah. which is this one here and for your humbucker you'll want to be using 0 0.022 those, those readings are in microfarads ok we'll just talk about tools, we don't need much we need some solder, this is a, a tin silver compound uh, you can still get the old lead but I wouldn't advise that you use the lead it's easier to work with but of course it's more toxic the other important thing you're going to need is a soldering iron we're using a Hakko soldering iron station as you can see it's like a, a unit and the iron plugs into that it's got a little reed out here comes to temp really quick this is the other typical sort of thing uh, this is a cheapy cheap one from Aldi and I wouldn't recommend this, I don't think it's really got enough wattage I've just been using that for a bit of light wood burning uh, that style of thing is available by people like Weller and that's really a good name to buy and not expensive the other things you're going to need something like a pair of needle nose pliers side cutters and something to strip the insulation off the wire and you can use uh, these wire strippers or just a knife that's it let's get on with it okay here we are we're going to start wiring this up now and uh, we'll talk you through what's involved okay well the first thing I'm going to do um, the order up which I will do it in is I will wire the two pots together then I will introduce my pickup wire on um, then I will again from another pot add the capacitor last of all I will connect the jack socket just for easier display. I mean, it doesn't matter which order that you do do the process in. Um, but first of all, I am going to use my solder 
to what we call um, tin, tin the little tabs on the pots. So what you want to um, understand though is that on your whichever pot you're using for your volume, on this tab here you'll want to bend it back a little bit, not too much, but just so that when you um, solder your wire on it's not it's not an awkward sort of placement. So using you don't need to use too much too much solder. And so what I'm doing is I'm holding my iron against the tab of the pot and then I'm introducing the solder. You shouldn't I mean depending on which iron that you're using you might have to hold it there longer again depending on the solder this is pretty good stuff so it's it's, it's instant so tabs are done and then, okay um, the next bit you're going to do is you want some blobs of solder onto the top of your pots so again I hold my iron against the top of my pot where I've filed it away and I've got a little blob and on this one I'm going to do two, it just makes the wiring a lot easier, you can do it all on one but it can get a little bit messy. So I'm going to do one up here, yep. and then one down here as well. Okay, so that's done, put my soldering iron away. The next bit I'm going to do is I've got a reel of wire down here. and. Well, what I'm doing, I'm using black wire here. I will just need enough just to join them like this. So cut that off. Take my tools. You don't need a huge amount of bare wire. Can we just see that? So. Yeah, I think we've got that in shot. Yeah, it's yeah, probably go. about not quite a centimetre. Yeah, you don't need a lot. I mean, depending on what you're using the wire for, you might want more. So if you're twisting two wires just together. Just watch what you're doing there, because if you yes. saw what... You, we're just cleaning that uh, off, because it will sort of oxidise and burn the solder. So occasionally you need to clean it off. And once you have cleaned your, your iron, you'll need a little bit more solder on you. You always need to keep your soldering yes. iron supplied with wet solder. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my wire and I'm going to tin the ends. To dry, what you end up doing is you have a bit of solder on one half, a bit of solder on the other, and then the soldering iron melts the solder together. Yeah, like that. You see how quick that was? Yeah, you don't need to uh, it sort of hold them together long. This is the value of having a good, powerful soldering iron. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you do have a, a weaker soldering iron, you might have to hold it there longer. Um, and again, depending on what type of solder you're using, some of them can leave quite um, a brown sort of residue on it, which can be a bit annoying. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is good stuff. Yeah, well, actually, we'll see if we can put a link or a, a note on the bottom of the video what this... This is actually, I think, is Weller um, solder. We use some other stuff, and that's the guilty party there. <laughs> um, that's a stanol, and it's got exactly the same composition, but the flux in it, as Anne was saying, leaves a horrible brown sticky mess, yeah. and it just doesn't seem to, it just doesn't like sticking to these pots, so we don't use it. Yep. So, the next bit I've got is my pickup. Um, Quite often when you get these, the wires aren't twined together, but it's a good idea to do just to prevent them from being pulled. You'll need to take a sort of a decent amount off the end here, because what you're going to be want to doing, you want to solder it onto the top and onto the tab on your pot there. So you can cut it oversized and then nip the end off, that's no problem. So if I take my iron, you don't, what I do usually, I tin the end bit because I know for sure that that's going on the tab. Yeah. Well, you have to be careful though, so you don't use too much solder because it can then run, and you'll end up with it being on the sort of central bit underneath. Yeah, you don't you want. don't want a short circuit. Also, uh, the whole thing with tinning the wires it means there's no stray bits of wire to cause a short circuit. Yeah. Again, I did a little bit of tinning on that, and I've just got to hold it, and hopefully 
There we go. It is possible to overheat these pots and damage them if you put too much heat in, but the amount of time we're spending on, on, on this isn't going to damage it. No. So the next bit I'm going to do is I need to join up these couple of tabs here. This one I will use my red wire. I mean, it's all the same stuff but yeah. it just it just helps you see the difference and if you're doing a repair or an alteration it's just that bit clearer yeah the convention on this is that the the red is what we call the hot wire the live wire the black is the earth or ground if you're uh, using american terminology okay what i'm going to do is i'm just going to sort of twist these two together like so and then I'm going to again tin those these bits together I mean this bit is a little bit tricky because sometimes you might want to um, remove a fair amount of the cover just to be able to get them to twist together and um, it just makes it a lot easier for soldering because you'll want both of these down onto the same tab here yeah that's good and I've tinned the other end already and that one will go onto the middle tab on here this is a pretty standard way of doing it there's a couple of variations if you look on different sites like Seymour Duncan or whatever, you may see the way they, I think they, 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 they flip these around with the capacity and the, and the wire. It's essentially doing the same thing. So don't worry if you might be using a slightly different wiring diagram, but this is the one that we, we've always used and it works fine for us. Yeah, I mean, next what I'm going to do is going to add my capacitor in. So I have my 0 0.047 and I'm going to just cut off sort of the excess here it doesn't matter which way around you sort of have the writing or anything like that I'm just going to bend one of them slightly so that it will fit onto the top of the pot and again you can tin the capacitors as well I find that I don't need to so I'm going to get some of my solder sort of line it up Hold that down. There we go. Take some more solder. This one can be a little bit awkward to get it in. It's like a heat sink, so you might need to spend a little bit of time on that. Yeah. As you see, there, it's always worthwhile just giving everything a very gentle tweak to make sure it's, it's on. There. If it's loose, it's what you might call a dry joint. It might look like it's joined, and when you actually touch it, it pulls apart. It's just sort of almost held on by suction or, or just the flux acting like a glue. Yeah. Now, the next bit I'm going to do is I've got to connect my jack up, and this is the bit where it will sort of vary depending on where your jack is. Because you've got to have... It's a bit tricky when you're wiring it into your guitar um, because, obviously, we've removed our jack from our jack socket just to make it easier to wire. When you do it yourself you might have to bring your box up to get your wiring correctly. So you've got your worth wire here which is going to go down to the tab on your jack to the centre of it. So you've got one tab going to the outside and one tab going onto the inside so you want your earth wire on that one. And what I'm going to do I need to connect it to the Blubber soldier on top of the pot and the tab there. So this is what we call Van Damme wire and I am going to use mm, roughly about this much. We have on our little board here, I know exactly how much mm -hmm. I'm going to be using. Um, but you just want enough so you can sort of connect your pots to your jack socket. Um, again, it will depend on your box as how much um, leeway you will have. I'm just going to take my pliers and cut a bit off. This the, the wire that we're using here, this orange stuff, it's two core. It's, you, you see when, when, when Anne strips this back, it's got two cores, uh, a white and a blue, and it's also got a separate shield. So 
it's probably about the best stuff you can use to help prevent any picking up hums from light and it's surprising if you just use a pair of ordinary twisted wires that can actually pick up hum so I'd always recommend in using uh, a piece of shielded wire like this. It may be a little bit over the top, um, and but for the little extra expense and hassle. So can you see that you've got the th you've got the three conductors there? The white is the uh, hot or live. The blue is the earth or ground, and the the, the bare one that's the shield that's also going to go to ground. Yep. So again, I just used a simple scalpel and just sort of rolled the wire underneath to get the, the air to bit off. But you'll just want to take off, again, the end of this white wire. And you'll want to strip back most of the blue and do the exact same thing on the other side. Yeah. When you when you strip off that outer insulation, you get. I mean, that looked really quick and easy the way Anne did that, but she's probably done this hundreds of times. You do need to be careful you don't cut through the inner insulation on your inner wires. It's very easy to do that, and if you do that again, you could have a short circuit. So it looked it looked dead easy there, uh, but there is a bit of a knack to it. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to again twist these two together, the two bare wires together. So that's the, that's the bare and the, the, the blue one that's had all the uh, insulation stripped off it. That's going to be the ground or earth wire. Yeah. So when it comes to your pots, you're going to have this one is going to be connected to the middle tab. And then you're going to have this one connect to the bit which you soldered on top, which is what I will do now. Again, it's you can sort of wire these in any combination. You don't have to do one bit before the other. Um, it really doesn't matter. It's just in terms of your own convenience um, and what you're used to doing. So I'm going to tin that one. This one's the and I do a little bit. On it. This one's a little bit awkward to to get right. Again, so you see that you just need to leave everything still. And w one thing which I would suggest is um, try and avoid the temptation to wiggle the iron about, thinking you're going to get the heat. It you want to keep it still so that heat conducts through that um, solder and wiggling it about really doesn't help yeah. at all you want to keep that iron fairly still yeah and then just leave it for a couple of seconds for it to cool enough that you make sure you've got a nice tight solder joint so that's that bit next we've got to just connect our oh, jack socket i'm just using that to hold hold it in place it just makes it a little bit mm. easier it's sometimes easier actually doing this when it's on the guitar but for the purposes of this if we do this you probably won't be able to see anything that's happening at all yeah. so in this one we're going to have your white one's going to go to your outer and this one's going to go to your inner so on this you're going to have to twist your earth wire together so you what you'll have you'll have three sets of wires coming together i mean what i sometimes do is again i sort of um peel back quite a lot of the, the outer casing so that I can get enough wraps and then if it's too long you just sort of trim the end just to get the the excess off. Well one thing here when you if you when you're using your your fingers you really want to be using them as little as you can on the bare wire so before you start working make sure your hands are clean if there's any grease on them the solder will be fighting to stick to that wire yeah. so you want to handle it as little as possible. And what I'll need to do again, like with I did with the pots, I want I need to get a sort of a blob of solder on each of the tabs. It doesn't matter whether you do it on the outside of the tab or the inside of the tab. I do suggest doing it on at least on the central tab here that you do it on the outside, so you have less risk of it dribbling down into the centre. Because if you use too much, um, that can happen. So, this is a voice of experience here. If you're wondering yeah. why. Uh, <laughs> 
that's been suggested to you. Yeah, so I usually tend to do one on the inside and one on the outside, just, just have it really more than anything else, it doesn't particularly matter. Away. So it can be a little bit fiddly. You can see usually it's about a count of five is, is about enough for that solder just to cool off and set. Yeah. You do not want to be moving it during that period otherwise you can as I say, get a dry joint. Yeah. But it looks like it's soldered, but it isn't. So this one's the most, I would say, annoying one to do. You might have to use a fair bit of solder because it's a fair chunk of wire. Um, yeah, that's something you, you are going it, to... It's, it's far easier just one wire. When you've actually got three, it's physically quite a big um, lump of wire, as, as Anne says, for the solder to actually flow round. Yeah, you might have to sort of triple check and maybe even add a bit more, but that feels okay to me. Just, it's best if you double check everything. So go around, have a look, have a little bit of a fiddle. It's all good. So next what I'm going to do is that I will need to test it to make sure it's all working okay. So if you just grab um, any amp will do, it doesn't matter. You've got the one here. And, oh, I can reach the back, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we can tell that it's already working. I just need to put it straight in. The next, but you will want to, if you tap your pickup, and if then if you, and then at the same time, if you, you can tell the volume is working and then you've got your tone and again the, one of the ways that you can do this which is easy if you scrape it you can definitely hear a change yeah. in sound it's, it's a high frequency so also it's it's worthwhile actually making sure that your amp has got a little bit of treble on it if you wind the treble off on the amp sometimes it's difficult to hear if the yeah. controls are cutting it so yeah that can be a little bit bigger Different. You can hear that difference. Yeah. Always check before you, you put it together and put the strings on. There's nothing more annoying than having put your guitar together, screwed it all together, put the strings on, mm. and for you to find you've got a duff connection. Yeah, and also another thing to make sure is make sure both your amplifier and the wire that you're using, the lead that you're using, work correctly. Because we have had occasions where he has wired a guitar up fully, put it all together, put the strings on and discover that it's not working when it's in fact either the amp is wrong or and he refused to I mean it's the first thing he says whenever you get a problem on the email is make sure your wire is your lead sorry is correct and that was the problem but yep he just oh no I'm gonna have to take it all apart and he already started so just change the lead change the lead and yeah it was the lead which was the issue so yeah, if you don't find it's working at the first, yeah, just have a look at your soldering, but also make sure you check your, your amp and your and your lead as well, because it could be just that as a simple issue. So, that's how to wire a guitar. I hope you didn't find it too difficult. Minimum amount of tools, just a soldering iron and a bit of solder, and so we've just got to put this guitar together and get some strings on it, and it's finished. Okay. See you next time.